I just want to show you a couple of other features of managing type. Um, I want to take a look at the difference between two terms that are common in typesetting. One is tracking and the other is kerning. Both are available to you from the character menu. We'll just begin here with tracking. And tracking typically applies to a range of selected text. So whatever you've used your text tool to select, you notice I've got my text tool selected. I've selected this entire word. And if we just take a look here in our character menu, you can see that we have tracking. And look at the icon. It's indicating kind of what we've got going on here. You've got a range of text which is selected. And it starts either subtracting a set amount of space between that entire range of text. Or you can add space between those letters. So what you're doing is you're actually deviating from what the type designer had specified. You're adding in more space or you're subtracting space. Ideally, we should be trying for letter spacing of zero. Now, not all, spa not all type is spaced equally. Um, there are times where we have to make some interventions. What the type designer is trying to do is ensure that this space in here, this space, and this space, and this, and this, and this, and so on, the interletter spacing is optically equal. Now, if I were to look at that, I could make an argument that the space between the R and the A has actually more volume. If you imagine filling these areas up with water, and you think about the volume, theoretically, the volume in between these letters should be the same. That gives you proper optical balance. Now, why is that important? Well, it's very important in terms of how we read. Because if there is insufficient optical balance, it'll affect the way in which we reconstitute a word in our brains and in the way we speak it. This will be read as tracking instead of tracking. And so part of our job is ensuring that's tracking. Tracking. And if you think about it, the Phoenician alphabet, so everything that governs Roman languages, and even every single language in existence today, can be written in English, perhaps with the exception of some areas of uh, in Africa where they use very guttural sounds. We don't, as far as I know, have symbols, well, certainly not in the Roman symbol system that represent those sounds. But for the most part, pretty much any sound a human can make can be covered in any one of the uh, 27 symbols that we have. Or is it 26? I can't remember. In our um, alphabet. It's the world's very first sound recording technology, universal sound recording technology. It allowed the Phoenicians to travel all over the world and actually record the language using this set of symbols. Use the, the Phoenician alphabet to record every language in the known world at that time. It gave them a massive trading advantage. And they were a seafaring people, seafaring people from uh, the shores of modern day Lebanon. And that was probably about 4,000 years ago. Well, at least 3,000 years ago that that was developed. Now, kerning deals with pairs of letters. So we, there's no selecting a range. With kerning, we click in between a pair of letters, and we use this. Notice, as soon as I've done this, there's already a value of minus 7. Now, you ask yourself, where did that come from? Well, the person that designed this typeface actually went in when they were building the font 
and they tweaked the spacing between the letters. Let's just set this to zero for now. They noticed that when they designed it, it looked like this. And the type designer rationalized that that space between the K and the E is too much. It's not optically balanced, so I'm going to kern it. So they went in between the K and the E, not in this software. There's a software called Fontography, if you're ever interested in designing your own fonts, that's the type of software you'd use to build it. Um, and so they kept kerning the space. Now the other letters are adjusting. They're maintaining their same space, but they're just reshuffling so that they're still in line with the other letters. And you'll notice I keep kerning the K and the E will butt right up against one another. So that's kerning. Let's just use minus 100. Only the K and the E are affected by this. The same spacing that's specified. As I click here, take a look at the kerning values. Most of them have a kerning value of 0. But there are certain letter pairs. Look at that. They added a little bit more space between those. If that was set to 0, they probably felt that the edge of the R was too close to the stem of the N. So they decided to give it a little more spacing. So they kerned that at a value of 2, just to create a little more breathing room in there. So that's the difference between tracking and kerning. Okay.